Beyond the success, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you about something that's dear to my heart, about how do we all overcome hurdles? How do we stay in the zone? It's good when we're having a good day. When you're in races, your family is good, your money is good, your children are good, you know, your favorite football team wins, your basketball team wins a game. <laughs> it's good when the sun is shining. But on those days when it's not good, how do you get back up? How do you overcome the hurdles? And how do you succeed? My testimony isn't that I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth. My testimony is not that I'm somehow successful and famous. And I've been blessed. I've been an ordained minister. I've been ordained by a bishop named Bishop T.D. Jakes, if you know who he is. He's a mega pastor, yes. I've been uh, married people, buried people, baptized people. I've uh, traveled around the world for free, uh, you know, to represent the United States of America. I've been there and done that, but it hasn't gone without paying a price. So I want to share with you my philosophy of how you overcome hurdles. Does anybody here not know how to experience or have not experienced a hurdle in their life that they had to overcome? If you haven't, meet with me, I'll give you some of mine. <laughs> the ability to overcome hurdles, the ability to overcome painful situations. I'm a counselor and a life coach, and one of the aspects of mental health is helping individuals overcome traumatic, life-changing, difficult scenarios. Rejection, oppression, depression. How do you overcome Defeat. How do you overcome failure? My major hurdle, a lot of us, is the hurdle of overcoming what? Fear. What? Fear. Now, we say this, and you've heard this before. Fear, fear, fear. What does that mean? Does it mean I have to look underneath the bed before I go to bed? Does it mean I have to get big and be aggressive towards someone? No. There are five fatal factors of fear that I want to share with you. The first one is the fear of failure. Have we all been there? What is the fear of failure? Well, when you're an athlete, and when you're in a track and field athlete, and I ran the 110 meter high hurdles, that is 100 meters going over three and a half feet barriers to come up to about here, running as fast as you can, and you have to be a little insane to do that, first of all because you are going to fall. That's the initiation. If you don't fall and scrape up your knee in front of an audience, not at practice, you're not a hurdler. The feel of failure, those are the people that don't try because they're afraid that they're not going to win. Have you ever seen them? Those are the older ones playing basketball with the <laughs> little guys. It says, I can beat you and she's in diapers. <laughs> the fear of failure. The fear of rejection. That's what are people going to think? How many times have we not pursued our goal, not been courageous enough to do something because we worried about what other people are going to think? I don't want to run for this office. I don't want to speak up and do the right thing. I'm not going to even try because I don't want to be rejected. I'm afraid about what people are going to think. The fear of the unknown, these are, we call them control freaks. Have you heard that term? No, I'm not talking about a gender, okay? I'm just saying control, <laughs> fear of unknown. Yes, I'm in a relationship, but I'm not talking about that. I mean, she's always right. That's the problem, you know. I'm, and I still don't know, but, you know, the fear of being unknown. Those are those, ladies and gentlemen, that don't try unless they know every single possible outcome. They call them perfectionists. They call them those that, okay, if I'm going to do this, how is it going to turn out? 
Therefore, they don't even try. The fear of being what? Wrong. Now, I know some of you don't have that fear. But how many of you guys are afraid of being wrong? I travel around the world and I speak to a lot of audiences. And believe it or not, I was at the NIH, National Institute of Health, and guess what? I asked them a question. And do you realize these are scientists, doctors, MDs, PhDs, they did not even raise their hand. And it was a question, I, okay, maybe you know, I said, why did the chicken cross the street? <laughs> and nobody raised their hand. <laughs> because they were afraid of being wrong. We can make light of it now, but in a pressure situation, when it's your time to ask for that promotion, when it's your time to stand for something that you believe in, when it's your time to take a step of faith and a leap of faith, are you afraid of being wrong? Whether it's in a classroom, raising your hand, whether it's at job, whether it's speaking up in your relationship, are you afraid of being wrong? Has that caused you to bypass your goals? The fear of pain. Success does not come easy. I don't care if it's in a relationship, athletic field, a job, academics. I remember there's something at USC called the Stacks, and it's the library in the, in the basement. Being an athlete, I didn't know we had a basement. I didn't know we had a library until my <laughs> junior year. <laughs> Mike Garrett is gone. He was the AD. We're good. The fear of pain. You have to work hard at what you want. This notion that it's going to come easy. Only thing comes easy is excuses. You have to be willing to deal with pain. Now, how do we offset, ladies and gentlemen, the fear of failure, the fear of rejection, the unknown and being wrong and pain? With what? The fear we need to replace it with the fear to what? Succeed. The fear of rejection with what? The need to be what? Approval. Self-approval. The fear of unknown? The need to be in control. We all want to feel in control. We all want to need some type of approval, validation. We all need to succeed. Succeed in fear of being wrong? We all need to be right. I will introduce you to my lady at the end of this, and she will help you out with that of being right. Just listen to her. <laughs> Fellas, am I right? Yes. OK. Youngsters, listen up now. <laughs> fear of pain, fear of comfort. That pat on the back, that hug, that affirmation, that acknowledgment. You're doing good. You look nice today. I appreciate your efforts. Everybody needs to feel comfort. I'm going to share with you a story. Which one are you? Another major hurdle is the what? Attitude. Can you say attitude? attitude. Now, we have a lot of stereotypes of what this means. But your attitude dictates your effort. And we're talking about focus. And your attitude dictates what you are going to focus on. I live in Chatsworth. Anyone know where that's at? By Porter Ranch. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> and it took me and my family, three hours on the freeway to get here. Now, last time we had a dress rehearsal here, and it only took me about an hour. I was doing a carpool lane, you know, driving 10 to 65, 80 miles an hour, right? <laughs> Until I got on the 7 to 3, and poof, poof, I didn't know you got this toll roll out here. <laughs> and I got something in the mail, right? <laughs> she saw my attitude thin, right? Anyway. Back to the presentation. It took us three hours to get here. 
if we did not have the right attitude, if I did not have the right attitude, if my family didn't have my, the right attitude, it would not have been a pretty experience. How many of you guys have been in the car with a younger sister or a child that's seven, six, seven, eight years old? Three hours. No snacks. No video in the back seat. Just my head to beat on, okay? But when you have the right attitude, your success is almost inevitable. And we will discuss what the definition of success means. How do you perceive yourself? Do you perceive yourself as the big dog or the little dog? Better yet, do you perceive yourself and do you perceive that the big dog somehow is better than the little dog? When you're walking them and cleaning them up, answer that question. <laughs> but when you're walking down the alley, which one do you want, right? We all have attitudes. The year is 1996. I was ranked number one in the world. Now, I am so honored to meet some of the presenters and the uh, gold medalist and the baseball player because, like him, I'm an athlete. And he can contest to some of this. In 1996, I was ranked number one in the world. And a unique thing about track and field is it's not really a team sport. It's sort of like an individual team sport. It's an individual sport, but when you lose, it becomes, well, when you, uh, technically, when you lose, it's an individual, but when you lose, you must say, hey, we messed up, but you know, it's really you there, right? <laughs> Unless you're on a relay. But ladies and gentlemen, we have 100 meters to run in 13 seconds. Well, 12 seconds if you're Olympic level and world class. No. Picture this, 12 seconds, there's no quarters, there's no best two out of three, there's no next time, there's no half time, there's no innings. I was in Sydney, Australia, flown 14 hours with 12 seconds to determine whether I have a gold, silver, or bronze medal, or nothing at all. How do you focus? How do you depend on yourself at 10? How do you get, find, and stay in the zone? In 1996 and 2000, I was ranked number one in the world, trained hard. We all know about that discipline, dedication, determination. Fred Rogan, NBC News, came. I was training and he put the camera underneath because they thought it would look nice if I had a, a picture of them, me going over the hurdle. Well, when I saw the camera, I got a little distracted, and my foot came up, and it hit the top of the hurdle, and I tumbled, and I reached out, and crack, broke my left arm. Now, we all talk about when it's good. I was feeling good because I was numbered in the world, Gold medal was practically mine, and now I'm being taken to emergency care and cast with a broken arm just two weeks before I run. Not one week before the opening ceremonies, but two weeks before I ran. Before I got to the hospital, the guy who took fourth place called, Mark, you want me to take your place? <laughs> I'm sorry about that, brother. <laughs> Fast forward about attitude. If your attitude isn't right, you'll quit. Your focus. Let me tell you about focus. When to focus. How to focus and what to focus on. When to focus is your balance. There's something called burnout. Compassion fatigue, overtraining, overstudying, cramming, belaboring in a relationship, overtime, extra overtime, 
Practice is when you learn to develop your in the zone. People say, how do you get in the zone? How do you master being the best? How do you stay focused? Consistency is the mill of champions. Whatever you do, it becomes a part of you. It's called being consistent. When you guys are going through your daily routine, make sure you understand that what you do, you are practicing and you are repeating over and over and over again. When you're driving, you don't even recognize a sign until like three weeks, three months, three years later. So I've never seen that there because it's consistency, balance. Know when to turn it on and turn it off. Don't overtrain, overthink, overapply. I did not panic today because I know this. I do this every day. So whether I looked at my presentation, whether it took three hours and I didn't have time to, you know, do my normal post-game or pre-game rather routine, so be it. Have confidence in yourself that you put in the time already. Believe in yourselves quickly. What to focus? Can you guys say compete? compete. Not compare. Not compare. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your key to success at anything. If you learn how to compete and stop comparing, you will succeed. I cannot be LeBron James. I can't be who I'm not. But I can be me. And I can be a champion being me. And I can be the best being me. You can be you. And I guarantee you, nobody can be better being you than you. But if you compare yourself to someone else, you're not being you. But if you compete, then you can be the best you you can, and nobody can beat you being you. And I'm here to tell you what's yours and what's meant for you will be yours. But if you compare your wage, your athletic ability, your GPA, if you are constantly comparing yourself, you're not validating yourself. You're letting those fears that we talked about previously overcome you, and you will never have that fulfillment. You will never feel good. So remember, compete, but don't compare. You got your positive focus and your negative focus. Positive focuses on things that you can control. Negative focuses are things that you can't. We call it stinking thinking. <laughs> We're in a race, and I'm worried about these ugly, other ugly guys just standing next to me, smelling like cologne and Ben Gay mixed together. <laughs> you know, they're going over and they're doing their thing, and I'm worried about them. That's the wrong kind of focus. People always ask how to focus. Give yourself permission to try, to win, to lose, and most importantly, to get back up and do all three again. Quickly, focus equals timely executed action. Let's say it together. Focus equals what? Timely executed action. This is what we call it F equals TEA. Whenever you get nervous, whenever you get excited, whenever you want to get focused, just say, can I have some tea? Just take some tea. 